Nice. Righteous noise. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. I ran, I ran out of breath while I was saying that. Hang on, still we've got the click going. Uh, uh. You mean you weren't breathing while you were playing the guitar? No, then? no. Maybe that's my whole issue. Oh, just play that again, right? Just play exactly what you were playing again, but breathe, okay? Okay. So think about breathing in. And I was doing yoga last night. Right. Our yoga teacher absolutely killed us last night. So um, I, I appreciate the comments are going to go nuts at this point. But Dan. Do play exactly what you were just playing with the same sound because it sounded amazing. Right. And now breathe in and out. Think about breathing in and out. I've heard it said many Hello, times. Guys. Welcome to that pedal show. I didn't see you even get that on. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I stopped breathing. Uh, David Kilminster uh, has also said the same thing to me. Um, so, sorry, I dropped my Prime Tone Dunlop USA pick. Nine, I've never seen a point nine six. Nice. It's really nice. We're going to do a pick and mix on picks in the future. So what David was saying was, because so David plays for um, Roger Waters. I oh, know we can't. can't I, I've never met him. So no. We can't can't honk him. He goes to the. T so he's the guy at the top of the wall that goes into the, the solo, and he says every time he does that solo, he just stands there, he just takes a. Do you mean the comfortably numb solo? The or the, no, wrong album. Um, it's the wall. It's um. Yes, that one. Is it another brick in the wall? I don't know what Sony does when he gets up the top there. Oh, it's indeed, it's indeed is it? isn't it? I think. Here we go. If a five-year-old boy played that solo, that's what it would sound like. Right. So you know, but he says the same thing. But it's <clears> all about breathing, and I don't, and I have the same in, in all walks of life. I in I just forget to breathe. Maybe I need. I think that's a development objective for Dan. There we go. Interesting, isn't it? How about that for a tangent as we kick off? How to get more out of your Vox AC thirty <laughs> AC fifteen? So this is. I have loved Voxes for a long time. I've got I've got vintage AC ten, vintage AC thirty, and I've played through lots of old AC 15s that I've loved. I've never played through the new ones. So this is new to me. Yep. So um, for anyone who doesn't know, Vox's AC 15 originally came out, what, 58? Something like that. About then, anyway. Because they had the TV fronted. Because my, my AC 10 is 59. And before that, they had those the, the TV fronted things. And yeah. Late 1950s, uh, rock and roll's kicking off. Um, the Shadows, the Beatles, obviously it's the sound of generations. The AC30 is arguably more famous, but anyway, this sound is basically nothing like that um, in terms of how it, uh, in terms of its construction internally. However, it does have some things in common with it, mm -hmm. as do all the modern Vox AC series amplifiers. Um, so they ran for a while, then they went away, then they came back reissued. I tell you Please do. All right. I was uh, at a well-known um, amp tech repair guy and I was telling him about my Voxes. And he says, have you ever heard an original AC30? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, originally, the AC30s were a pair of EL34 okay. advice valves. Interesting. But when they did the chassis and everything for it, the EL34 valves wouldn't fit in that area, so they changed it to two to from two EL34s to four EL84s, 
and that's how they got the sound. Because he had an original N to repair, and he said it's the best amp he's ever heard. That's really interesting. Isn't that? I, I, I hope it's true. Yeah. I've never actually read that before, but I hope it's true. Yeah, I think there's like 30 of them made. Yeah. So anyway. Anyway, okay, so let's forget the history lesson. You can read all about that online. But a big, a big part of them, a big part of the sound is, is the EL84 power tubes. Well, and the way that the power section is configured. Yes. So cathode bias, um, no, no negative, negative feedback. feedback, all these things that you can read about in AMP yeah. forums where people get very angry and argue with one another. On to the AC15. So this is the A15, I think it's called the C1X, which is the the newest model as far as 2017 is concerned. It has a Celestian Blue speaker. Which they is come... all massively important, isn't it? Well, the, I actually like the sound of the greenback. So yeah. for years and years and years on Guitarist Magazine, we did pretty much all of our demos using an AC15. Really? Pretty much all of them. Wow, okay. Yeah, because it was an amp that just recorded really well. And that was with a greenback. Okay, So interesting. It comes with a choice of speaker. This is with the more expensive blue option because it's kind of, as Dan is alluding, it's the thing. So Dan's never heard one before. As you can see, we've got amp cam, and I need to just give a, a shout to Triad Orbit. <laughs> who makes make stands and clamps that are more reliable than my fingers. <laughs> um, we met these guys when we were at GitCon in Germany. Hello to all the GitCon guys as well. If you don't know what GitCon is, just Google it. It, it was, was so much fun. Awesome thing yeah, that man. we went to and that we're gonna go again to next year. Uh, anyway, these guys tried Orbit, gave us some stuff, and it is really good. Brilliant. I have a little OCD meltdown every time I can't clamp something to something. It really does. This, this, people, is what I'm talking about. You got genuinely excited. And it, it gets there more was, interesting than that. There was dancing. <laughs> there was dancing. Anyway, Amp Cam shows you what's happening on top of the AC15 there. Um, I'm going to fiddle, Dan. <laughs> you have your way, sir. <laughs> Oh, what happened there? Keep going. It's lovely. So one thing that all the Voxes have is there's a a lot of people refer to it as chime. Mm -hmm. It's something that happens in the top end. There's a, it's probably up around 5.5, heading towards 6K. And then the upper mids, not a lot of, and then mids, then not a lot of bottom end. But there's definitely something happening in that top.
especially with that guitar, which has mm. a lot of that. This guitar has less of that. And a lot of reverb. Mm. So that's the normal channel, right? There's two channels. One is normal, and you heard, you saw, hopefully, uh, annoying. Um, you saw me putting the master volume down and the input level up. That it was has a master volume. Yeah, so that's okay, something you couldn't do on an original AC15 or AC30. The old style ones didn't have a master volume setup. Mm -hmm. These do, so you can get the more preamp gain going. Interesting. And you heard that, so it was overdriving quite a lot mm -hmm. at one point. Yep. Did you like that? It, it, it was overdriving a lot. The, the whole magic for me with the AC30s is when the, the power amp's working. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, because it's I, fine. Just to explain that, if you had a, an AC30, uh, we've got one kicking around here somewhere. Um, Sorry, that's, that's so bad. We got old AC that's kicking around somewhere. It's just like, yeah. It's the door stops. We got some, yeah. Um, there's a pile of junk rest on top, but it's it, there. Depending which channel you're using, it has one volume. So when you turn that volume up, you're turning up the preamp and you're turning up the power amp all in one go. It's on one pot. Whereas here, as you saw, as we were demonstrating, it's got the, the, the dual arrangement. You also heard the tremolo, you also heard the reverb. Mm -hmm. And the only tone control that is active in the normal channel is the global tone cut which is kind of like a presence thing, which presumably works in the power amp. I'm assuming it works in the power amp. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, it's like a master presence control. Yeah. I will say, because you know, remember how I used to, I, I told you I used to have my favorite amps in certain venues, <laughs> right? So the walkabout at, in Watford, the AC30 just loved it there. And once it was massive gigs rammed and I managed to, to crank it all the way up. Best guitar sound I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it's unbelievable. unbelievable. Actually, talking about um, volume, I did get the old thingy meter out, so we may talk about dBs a little bit as we okay. as we get going about volume, because we are aware that a lot of people who own AC15s use them at home and don't get to crank them. So that's one huge benefit of that master volume setup, because you can get some overdrive going at a low volume, which is simply impossible on the old. I just remembered something. I need to put a treble booster on here, which I will do in a second. Let's do that in a second. Yeah. Um, right, so that was the normal channel. Here's the top boost channel. In fact, we'll come from the normal channel, so we've got some form of reference. Still top boost, right? Okay. So, you're not a fan of the top boost channel? Not in the slightest. Because? it. The thing for me is that I had loads of people saying, I think the AC30 is a terrible pedal platform. It's not. It's an amazing pedal platform if you use a normal channel. Because the normal channel is really open. <laughs> if you put pedals into the top boost channel, it just chokes everything. Because? The tone stack. And there's more gain. Do you load more gain. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have it's a whole lot of valve, you know, in there to create more gain and stuff. And it's like, if you like that sound, awesome. But when you when you hear the, the normal channel, with it giving a bit of love. Also, that is one of the most aggressive guitars I've ever heard. Grr right across the frequency spectrum it has one of the reasons it sounds so good is because it's so full absolutely everywhere right 
But if you have a slightly weaker guitar and you need to just push a little harder, mm -hmm. um, I quite like the the top boost channel. Okay. Mm. So we'll roll the global tone cut down a little bit. It works in reverse for anyone who doesn't know. It gets more trebly over here. gets duller the more you turn it up. Right. Just got a glassiness. That's the top of this channel, right? Yeah, hang on a sec. We'll keep going, just stick some reverb on there. So there's an overview of the two channels, mm -hmm. normal channel and top boost channel. However, there's one other thing you can do with this amp, which doesn't work on all amps, but because the channels are separate, mm -hmm. and we've got two separate inputs, mm -hmm. you could conceivably, and we'll see if this works, um, plug two inputs in and yep, switch between switch them. In. Yep, let's so see that. it just so happens that for later in the video, when we're going to be talking about um, other things you can do, we've got uh, another amp plugged in down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the input for the second amp. I'm going to plug it into the other. So now we've got inputs in normal and top boost. Groovy bit. So thanks to G2. Okay, so that's a normal channel. I really like that. All right, top boost channel. Raucous. This is both. You, you may or may not want to use both together, but you can essentially, even though it's not a channel switching amp, as long as you've got a switching device that can give you a or B or any AB switcher, it's possible with the two channels. Cool. So the next thing is, lots of people say that Vox amps aren't very good pedal platforms. Poppycock. <laughs> Come on. So we've got what have we got here? We've got a fuzz. Yeah. Uh, there's a fuzz. Yes. And that is a it's tone the, bender style fuzz. The, yeah. Uh, Scotty Smith says it's. Inspired by it was definitely Scotty's own thing, um, but I, you know, it's it's called a Mark IV. Okay, it's a fuzz face. It's a fuzz, not a fuzz face. It's a fuzz. We've got this lovely old thing. Okay, I have so many stories today. I bought this um, from uh, my friend David Moyce, uh, who was a guitar player from Air Supply <laughs> in Australia, and I got this twenty years ago, and I gigged loads with it the the level knobs sn snapped off and stuff um but i interviewed paul crowther from crowther audio <laughs> who was the original drummer from split ends, split ends yeah. and he designed these and neil finn and i've met neil finn come on <laughs> still has the original on his board he designs his pedals with an ac30 with Voxes. So, so we're hoping that it's going to sound good. We're hoping it's going to do some, make some righteous noise. Crowther Audio Hotcake. Uh, that's that's kind of pedal legend, isn't it? It certainly At is. At this point. So a fuzz, the hotcake, which is, is kind of its own thing, tube screamer, which everyone should really know, an OCD, which is very different from the tube screamer because it doesn't have that same type of mid push and bass roll off. And we put the tube screamer and OCD on there because there are a couple of reference pedals that you guys will know. Yeah. And finally, Hudson Broadcast, which is based on an old studio type preamp, isn't it? Yes. Is it a Neve 1073 or is it not? Uh, based on a Neve. Okay, so it's... Anyway, we'll get there. It has the transformer and that sort of stuff in there. It's, it's amazing. Very much its own thing. Um, okay, should we whip through them? Let's go. We're in the normal channel. Normal channel. Because that's got more headroom so you can hear the pedals. Yes. Is that it? Yeah? Yeah. 
So, do you want me to set the master volume on 10 again? Uh, as long as the preamp is turned up. That'll do. Great. We, yeah, okay. It's, it's loud. We, okay. Let's experiment Ooh. with it, because however much the amp is driving is going to make a big difference to how the pedals sound. Of course. So come on then, where should we start? All right. Well, let's start um, with... Well, this is... Okay. Let's go the fuzz. We'll start with the fuzz. I just turned. That sounds awesome. So, I, I, have a, I have a theory to explore. Okay. Let's put that back in the top boost channel. There's your top boost sound. Close. It's not a huge amount, isn't it? That was definitely doing what we think we were doing, was it? Yeah. I'm going to push the top boost channel input. Okay. It's considerably. Right. So there's the clean channel. Yeah. That top bass sounds really good. <laughs> it's all the gain all the time, down. That's what it yeah, sounds this good. True. This is true. Okay. So, okay. I'm confused at this point because people saying pedals don't sound good into Vox amps. That sounds absolutely mega ace to let's, me. Let's go through them. Let's so go let me through them. let me just turn it down a sec. I'm going to turn it down. Ah, see, this is. The I think thing. this is where we I might think, get the problem. Yes, absolutely. Let's do that again then. So come on then. Uh, this All is right. we're in the we're in the normal channel, yep. I think. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay. I read it all the time on on comments that voxes don't take pedals well. Yeah. Let's let's continue. Okay, let's move along. Because that's a very it's a, it's an amazing sounding fuzz. Right, so this is the broadcast. Again, channel the um 
I'm gonna just I'm gonna let the master breathe a little bit. Yeah, yeah, of course. Broadcast. I just had a thought while you were playing that. Um, so at the moment we're we're kind of gainy. It's amazing. So I'm just going to turn the gain down a little bit. Oh, don't do that. Just so that it's kind doing? of a <laughs> bit more pushy, as it were, as opposed to full on, you know. Just do that into the top of your shell. Just hit that last chord again. Normal channel definitely, uh, the top of the channel definitely compresses a bit more. It just, it just then it starts, it starts caving a little bit. Yeah. Because um, obviously we're hitting it with a, a, I mean that thing, every time we plug it in, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's, so I was, I was kind of feeling that out a little bit there, because those aren't sounds that I use all the time. Mm. You know, I'm much more stratty, tube screamery. You sound awesome with that. But what? But what what put me in mind of it was it's got that kind of full rangey and it's got the aggressive treble mm. on top that just really reminds me of more rootsy, aggressive -y rock and roll. So I can't think so of a good. much better all round rock no. and roll. And you imagine at this volume, yeah, because that's not offensive, and that's what was the. I mean, DB meter showing there was about peaking at 99. We are often hitting 115, 116. That's why we're so happy. <laughs> Which is, and that's, oh man, that's good. That wasn't even in the high, high game mode, I don't think. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
want to try one thing, full gain, and I want to hit the tone cut across a bit. Okay. So... Top boost. Pushing things to ridiculous levels there. Yeah. But that broken... Not volume wise, just the in pushing the input of the amp. And you'll yeah. see see how the, the top of this channel reacted very differently. I so... was thinking, like, it wasn't the same, but I, in my head, I was thinking John Spencer, Dan Auerbach. Right. All those broken, just caving in tones. It's amazing. Which, if you if you came here to hear some Hank Marvin, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be wondering what's going on at this point. Okay, so we found two overdrive pedals that sound really good with an AC-15. Okay. Shall we see if, uh, if the third works? Right. So this is the, uh, the hot cake. Here we go. Aggressive in the treble there, Dan. Is that the normal channel? Yeah. Uh, that's the normal channel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So good with boxes. It really is so good with boxes. It retains a huge amount of string definition. Yeah. Well, how does it work with the tone? about my hot cake when I had it was that it seemed to get broken and fuzzy with high levels of drive. Okay. Okay, there's three pedals that sound good with a Vox. Shall we move on to the tube? Yep. Screamer. Retaining that, it's retaining the, the sort of high end of the Vox. Let's try and push it with a couple of humbuckers a minute. Compare that to the hot cake. Mm. 
So you get that classic tube streamer. Ah. Uh, um. Much more compressed. Yeah. 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 Okay. OCD. Okay. OCD. OCD. Here we go. We're rattling through them because we spent so long on the first two that we just need to speed up a little bit and kind of hammer the point home that pedals don't sound bad through Fox amps. All right. Here you go. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. That's rock, isn't it? That really is. That's, that's amazing. I mean... Okay, so... Certainly for those, um, you know, full-on rocky... Do you know what it is? You know what it is? We talk about this all the time. Those frequencies that work in a band environment. Yeah. Okay? Now, that's what that is. And we're hearing that, we're going, oh yeah, and, and we can hear that in, in a dense mix, sounding amazing. Yeah. If that's not a sound that you're used to. I it, suppose. It might be that you're hearing that going, that doesn't oh, sound it's, very it's, good. It's, all, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit pokey. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned this before, but we were at Gitcon uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think we've mentioned that in this video. Philex. And his uh, he plugs in the sound checking. We're thinking, really? Double honk. Really? Double <laughs> X. And then he, and then the band starts, and it's just, oh, it's just aggressive and loud and yeah. And but that sound would so work in that mix. Come on then. So can I just uh, yes, just replace this yep, with yep, this? Yep. Swap it out. And this is okay with a um, center negative power yep. supply. It's all good. Okay, so we very carefully swapped out the um, Pro Analog Mark IV for a treble booster just to finish off the gain thing. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Brian May uh, and Rory Gallagher famously used treble boosters into Vox style amplifiers. Yes. So, so what we can do, a treble booster into the normal channel. Now, the normal channel is set up pretty clean. Now, play this guitar. Just, just do one thing. Okay. Can now go back to the normal channel. Can you just crank the normal channel for us, or just turn it up to a point where the normal channel is rocking? Louder. More. Yeah, more, 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 more master volume, more master volume. No more preamp game, more master volume. into the um, top boost channel. Have you heard 
Have you heard Bad News' version of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? I don't want to. The best thing ever. <laughs> Just gives it that really mid focused and but bright, Bonky. lots of attack. That's the one fighting to keep it in tune, um, which is my fault, not the guitars. Uh, and I don't actually know any Rory Gallagher, oh, shockingly, okay. shockingly, but I just don't. But um, so here's the strat into the. Are we in Top Boost channel at the moment? Or no, it can be. That's do, it do, doesn't matter. Not for everyone, the treble booster, it's is not, it? It isn't. But <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's pull, let's pull, let's pull, please, just let's pull, and then I promise we'll move on. Okay. Love it, I love it. Loud, cutting. Defined. Yeah. It's still dynamic. So with using the volume control, using the, the, the changing the, the pick attack. Yeah. It's very special. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think, there's not much metal in there. No. Because the mid-range is in a completely the wrong place, yeah, isn't yeah. it? But for rock and roll, I mean. Okay, so we've been through some common types of overdrive pedals, so briefly through the tube screaming the OCD which are kind of um, well known by lots of people for, for good reason the hot cake is something that we think that works particularly well with Vox particularly well with, with AC30s yeah um, with, 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 with Voxes in general yes and for me 
star of the show today is the broadcast, mm -hmm. just because it's just doing all of the right things. Yeah, it's the broadcast for me on the lower gain setting, yeah. but with the with the gain trim cranked. Hot, hot cake. And, and that and the hot cake is just... And of course, AC15 and AC30, very different things, but treble booster into a Vox AC style amp is going to get you somewhere closer to... To Brian May, isn't Have it? listened to the trouble booster of the hot cake just quickly. It won't be right with this guitar. It'd be amazing. So, hot cake. <laughs> Good for what hours you. It's awesome. Okay. Right. F final thing. Final thing. Get more from your Vox AC15 by adding another. Add another amp. Dan and I talk about wet dry all the time as a really awesome sound. And if you. So, for the majority of this video so far, we've been playing at crazy loud volume in terms of home volume anyway. I mean, it'd be fine for a gig. Uh, so, we're going to add. If what you seek is a big sound at lower volumes, adding another amp, while it might sound crazy because you think, well, I don't need another amp, I don't need all that extra volume, it just adds spread and hugeness. Mm -hmm. So we have, I don't know if Simon can get in there with the camera, the Vox MV, uh, the Ace MV50 Clean. MV50 Clean, yeah. We did the MV AC and we kind of... Uh, we might have given it a bit of short shrift because we only had it at its lower power, lowest power setting and we kind of weren't that impressed with the headroom available. We had it into a 16 ohm cab so it was only putting out 12 and a half watts. So to kind of address the balance a bit, we've got the MV Clean which is 50 watts at 4 ohms. We still don't have a 4 ohm cabinet but we've got an 8 ohm cabinet. So it's actually putting out 25 watts and there is a huge amount extra clean volume in it and we're using it as a wet dry type approach. So right. Here's what happens. Okay, so, so this is just this amp. You're going to turn down to a slightly more sensible volume. So that's just the sound of the AC15. Dan has got the wet effects, so we've got ARP87, who's that by Dan? Walrus Audio. Yeah. So the wet effects are coming through the MV Clean and there's no wet going to the AC15 but the drives will go to both when you hear them. And then we've got the Specular Tempest by GFI. That's right, which is this one here. And now if we do that with both amps, Love that. I love just having the delay and reverb in one amplifier. It's so so good. It just makes the whole thing. So if you if you're sat at home playing, or wherever you're playing, and, and you find that the sound of that one by twelve cab just isn't giving you enough bottom end and expansiveness, just adding a second amp can make 
the world of difference and that so the MV50 clean that we're using there is 199 quid for the head part which it's not like buying a whole other amp that costs another 900 quid All day. All day long. All day long. I put a bit of tremolo in that amp as well so that it was, uh. <laughs> you've just got all this oddness going All day on. long, as long as this video. All day long. Yeah. Well, there we go then. Um, tentatively entitled, How to Get More Out of Your Vox AC15. It sort of turned into more of a, what can we do with a Vox AC15 and what um, overdrives work well. And finally, the wet dry thing, you know, two amps. I must say, because I love the Vox thing, I think that sounds awesome. I, I didn't expect it to sound as good as it does. I think it sounds fantastic. I could happily gig with that. Yeah. Happily, very, very happily gig with that. Yeah, and you imagine if you add something like that, the MV or Blues Junior or whatever. Oh, 1961 AC30. That <laughs> would be awesome. Yeah, it's a huge, huge sound, isn't it? I'm gonna Potentially. It. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. Love it. Love it. So good. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. It was fun. I, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know how I was going to get on with it, and I'm really, really happy. Brilliant, guys! Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Um, also, to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is Andersons, where this MV Clean came from. It even has the tagger on it, which I can't reach. The old tagger. Are. The old tagger, but 199 English doubloons. Uh, um, in Australia. Pedal Empire in Brisbane, and Queensland. In, in the USA. 
Riff City Guitar in... Actually, they've just opened a new store, which we're going to, or we may have just come back from. I'm really excited. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> um, yes, and if you want to head over to the adaptpedalshowstore.com... We might have some camo t-shirts left. I must say, mate, they look awesome. I was, Mick sent me a picture of that last night, and I'm like, no! It was... It's just, it's the six-year-old boy in me just going, I want a camo t-shirt and matching camo shoes, like an action man. Awesome. Uh, have I forgotten anyone? No. No, good. All right. Brilliant, guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week. Drew. Bye.